Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We is real as you What's going on, and welcome to another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans, Real Talk, in conjunction with the Sanchez Show. Uh, it's a whole lot of sports going on this week, but we had to narrow it down and uh, focus on one particular sport, the NBA, because it is the trade deadline coming up. Um, we're actually recording on on, on uh, Monday night, the 7th. The trade deadline ends on the 10th um, as this show will be airing. So don't 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 come looking for us. Uh, if, if something changes up between now and then, because a lot can happen in a couple of days. Um, but. We got we 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 got our our NBA insider in the building for this one, so you know we got some we got some things going on tonight. Um, but before I introduce our guest, let me introduce my co-host, my brother, the one and only Eric Sanchez, aka Legend in Two Games. What's up, man? Yo, what's really good, man? I'm super excited for tonight's episode. Uh, it's a busy week of sports. Obviously, we got the Super Bowl later in the week, but we got to get into the NBA trade deadline. We're a couple days away. So who better than Scoop B to join the show, man? Great friend of the show. Scoop, how you doing today, bro? Gentlemen, I'm doing good. Glad to be here and um, talk about the trading deadline before the trading deadline. But by the time it airs, it's after the trading deadline for y'all to be trying to get me on tape. Well, you know what it is? We we needed the sources. OK, right. we needed the sources. And, and for those of y'all don't know, that's a double entendre. OK, <laughs> so, so, so school, I'm a, cause I like to let you break the news on this one. Talk to us, man. You, you, you just this uh, every time we turn around, you got some big explosion that's going on. And, and you know, and, and we love the fact that you always continue to grind and to build and expand on, on everything that you got going on. So talk to us, man. Tell us what's, what's the new thing that you got going on this week. Um, so I actually started this week uh, a show. That is through the, the through, I joined the Spotify family first and foremost. Second of all, it's a it's a it's through their Spotify Green Room app, which um, it's comparable to um, Twitter Spaces, Clubhouse, in that they, they basically have in house their talent through Spotify. So I have a show called Scoopy Sources, uh, where essentially we talk about all the things that are going on in the league, and um, we kicked it off. Monday, where we discussed um, various situations, particularly as it relates to um, the people that the New Orleans Pelicans are interested in. Uh, some of those names include Duncan Robinson, CJ McCollum, uh, and, and others. And I also know that, um, you know, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson are the names that, you know, are, are not uh, being looked or, or being shopped. And, and then, of course, um, you know, Justin Holiday is a person who is of interest to a, a couple of teams, including the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, the Pelicans as well. The Pelicans really uh, want to uh, enter into the playing tournament and they're doing what they can to, to make that happen, particularly as it relates to premium shooting. Um, in addition to that, you know, we discussed everything that I do know as it relates to James Harden as well as Ben Simmons. Uh, I spent some time uh, recently in Philadelphia with the 76ers, spent about a week there uh, and, and did some digging uh, and, and, you know, cross-reference with my folks in Brooklyn and even my folks in Houston. So um, Scoopy Sources is a culmination of a lot of different things. I've been doing a lot of press behind it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be part of the Spotify team while still part of Valley Sports Network, where you can find my day-to-day -day work on TV, digital, and more, as well as uh, Bovada. You find my Instagram lives every week. That's more in the sports betting end. So just uh, putting my hand into everything and uh, glad to pay off my student loans. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that because uh, <laughs> they were supposed to be doing something with the loans with the, you know with the people in the office now i ain't gonna put nobody under the bus right now because you know they might still do it but i'm just saying you know you got to pay up them student loans at uh at some point yes. um we we're gonna jump right in but but because we got a whole we got a whole list of things but you did you said you was you know you talked about the pelicans i just want to get a quick did you did you get any type of update on zion and if he'll be back this season, because I know you said that, you know, they're trying to push for the playing tournament. So is it looking like Zion will be back this season? Well, if you paid attention to my reporting at the beginning of the season, 
Um, Zion's really been going through a lot of battery of rehab tests and more. Uh, last I checked with my sources within the Pelicans organization, there's no timetable set for his return. Um, and, and really and truly from everything that I've gathered, it's a mixed bag on one end. It's like, well, there's no rush to come back. Uh, on the other hand, it's more like, well, in the new year, could we make something happen right now? Mum is the word. Um, but I know that, you know, the combination of um, fitness uh, as well as just his lower extremities, uh, meaning his, his legs, um, that was a, 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 a pause, but also a cause for contention as it relates to just what his immediate future is. I think when you look at this team overall, uh, Brandon Ingram, uh, the, the, the reigning uh, Western Conference player of the year, um, is someone uh, who has been playing well. And, and in fact, many people believe is, is, has, was a snub uh, in the All-Star game, particularly with how he's playing. But um, when I look at this team under first-year head coach Willie Green, um, I, I think there's a lot of promise, but I, I think what they're lacking is, is leadership. And so I think when you bring in a guy like CJ McCollum, if, if, if they can find the right mix uh, to, to get him and trading him to a rebuilding Portland Trailblazers team, um, I think CJ McCollum would be someone who, who would be of great benefit from a leadership perspective, a guy that can play both guard positions. And I think someone who would mesh very well with head coach Willie Green and <clears throat> would play well in a system that is really a Mike D'Antoni system. You know, he's, he is a, 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 a consultant uh, to that team. Um, after spending time in Brooklyn with Steve Nash last year, I think this is going to be the new realm that you're going to see Mike D'Antoni in. Uh, where he's he's ushering in new head coaches into their roles and, and helping them, you know, in those nuances. So um, I, I think in, in short answer to your question, I think Zion Williamson, um, there's no timetable on his return currently. I think he's been going through rehab. I think he's been dieting. I think that um, <clears throat> there's no rush. Um, but I, I do think at some point they're going to have to answer some questions as it relates to their future. Well, that's a great point. And, and before we get into the topics we have tonight, Scoop, you mentioned C.J. McCollum might be on their radar trying to get into the playing game. Is that more to do with just their natural development as a team trying to get into playoff contention, or is this more about a move to try to keep Zion there long term? Because we've heard the rumblings that he may not be happy. From what I understand, both. And I'll also add that <clears throat> C.J. McCollum is not the only team. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans are not the only team uh, who have their radar on C.J. McCollum. The New York Knicks uh, have their eye on not just McCollum, but also Justin Holiday. Um, and, and, and what I'll say is specifically to someone like C.J. McCollum, I think he's somebody who has established himself as someone who will be a vet and someone who will be around in the league for a long time. Um, but I also think that he can legitimately help some teams. Um, I know that someone like Robert Covington, who was just moved uh, in, in, the, in the move with the Clippers, was somebody else who was on the Pelicans radar as well. Um, they're looking for two things from my understanding. Um, someone who has the duality of an actual veteran leader on the floor, kind of like a like a J.J. Redick, uh, but a little younger because C.J. McCollum seems like old, an old soul. Like he's like the 16 year old that seems like he's 30. He's just been around for a long time. But also, I think that the, the, the that the Portland Trailblazers are looking to rebuild and, and that team may not look the same come Thursday. Um, and, and And I also know. Um, that specifically as it relates to the Pelicans, um, they're trying to win. They're trying to continue that, that the culture of just getting to the next level. I, I think they want Zion part of it, but I also think that he's an, a great accompaniment at this point to Brandon Ingram. I think they were looking at him as a focal point. And I think the jury is still out just on his health, his, his, his conditioning. And I think until those questions are answered, to me, um, today, I, I still think it's Brandon Ingram's team. Let's get into some of these topics, though, man, because like I said, we're approaching a trade deadline. We've already had one trade. We're expecting some more. It's expected to be a very lively week. Karis LeVert is on his way to Cleveland, joining a very young roster, up and coming, kind of surprising some people. What are you hearing about this move and then potential moves by the Pacers? Because they've already let it be known. They, they're clearing your house. So is Miles Turner and Sabonis, are they next or are they going to hold on to those guys? Well, I know that Charlotte has had their eyes. The Hornets have had their eyes on Miles Turner for a very, very long time. Going back to the trading deadline last year, and I said this on Spotify Green Room uh, the other day on the first episode, a lot of times what you'll see, um, particularly at trade deadline and even in the offseason, you'll see teams revisit uh, conversations. So you saw it uh, comparatively 
um, last trade deadline where, you know, the Bulls were actively looking to bring in uh, Lonzo Ball and they ended up just getting Nikola Vucevic. But then ultimately what ended up happening was uh, the reason why the Bulls did not execute on that move with Lonzo Ball is because the Pelicans wanted uh, Kobe White and the Bulls didn't want to give up Kobe White. You saw how beneficial that was uh, for the Bulls, particularly this off, this season where, you know, Zach Levine and and and, and uh, Lonzo were out due to uh, health and safety protocols and injuries. So comparatively, when you look at Miles Turner now, and, and, and as you mentioned, the Pacers are looking to clean house. I know that Charlotte and the Pacers were having conversations uh, similarly um, last year uh, about potentially bringing in Miles Turner. I mean, this is a Charlotte Hornets team um, that has uh, an all-star in LaMelo Ball that's averaging close to 20 points, 7.2 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 1.5 steals per game, and was snubbed initially uh, as an all-star and it ended up, you know, being uh, part of the the, the, the group of, of players who were brought in to, to replace injured stars. He as well as DeJounte Murray and, and Jason Tatum, uh, who replaces Kevin Durant. But when you look at Mouse Turner, I think he's that piece as a center uh, who can um, really and truly uh, benefit Charlotte at large. Um, I, I, um, I am very cool with Mason Plumley. We were texting the other day, former net. And I think that Mouse Turner would complement uh, any core group of players on that Hornets team um, that I, I really think are just raw talent. Last I checked, eighth seed uh, and, and has dealt with COVID. If you really look at just that team overall, they started out hot. And then you just saw this influx of COVID that affected the Bulls, the Nets, the Hornets. Imagine a world where COVID wasn't an issue. The Hornets might still be a, a fourth or fifth seed. So I think bringing, if they're able to bring in Miles Turner, and by this point we'll know whether he's in because we're pre-recording this, uh, I, I think that Miles Turner would definitely be a benefit to a Hornets team uh, that's been in the hunt to try to get him for the last year and some change. Um, the Pacers are cleaning house, and I find what's very interesting about this Pacers team is this. Um, they have one of the oldest owners in North American sports, and it's been very difficult to get both um, coaches that are in tune with their players culture-wise and just um, relatable and I think it, it, there was the closest you saw with that Pacers organization with that was what they had with Nate McMillan and look what he ended up doing in, in, in Atlanta and then ultimately you know Victor Oladipo left uh, he, he if you paid attention to my reporting teams like the Knicks teams like the Miami Heat the Heat the, the team he's currently on you know ultimately got him in, in a trade and he went to Houston first and then found his way to Miami but Miami is where he wanted to be um, and, and so when I look at the Pacers organization, I know that they're looking to retool. It's unfortunate that Miles Turner may be part of that process. And as it related to the bonus, this is what I can tell you. I know that there have been conversations um, between the Pacers as well as the Philadelphia 76ers uh, of, of any iteration of either Sabonis or um, their point guard. Who's, it's, it's a little late. I haven't had my evening coffee um so Brogdon Brogdon yes there was a conversation going back in the fall and the summertime between the Sixers uh and the Pacers about Mal Malcolm Brogdon as well and so I, I think you're going to see Sabonis and 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 and, and Brogdon uh, being dangled a lot at, at, before the trading deadline but it's unfortunate because I really think that they have some formidable guys uh, and had they kind of stayed and um, it, it, it might have been a benefit, but I don't think, look at them as a championship team. Um, I, I think that they're just a, a collection of guys. I know that, you know, Grant over in Detroit is another guy that's been talked about it between any, anywhere from conversations with the Lakers uh, and the Pistons and conversations uh, with the 76ers for, for, for Grant as well. So uh, I, I, there'll be a lot of conversations between the Pistons and some other teams as well as the Pacers and some other teams as well. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing. Um... For the Charlotte's uh, sake, because I don't want MJ to start turning to the bottle, I really do hope that they can get Miles Turner because I'm thinking back to, uh, you know, that Lakers game when MJ had to get up and walk out of the arena. I felt so bad for the for the GOAT. <laughs> so I hope they do get something get something in there. And I think that Miles Turner would be a really great building block, uh, you know, for Charlotte because cause he's he's still pretty young and they got, they got, a, they got a young core, but he's older than a lot of those guys that are in Charlotte right now. 
and he's so relatable. I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Um, I heard you making a Michael Jordan reference, and as I'm as I'm listening to you, I, I, you're gonna laugh, but I'm thinking of that song by uh, Fat Joe, my fofo, and at the beginning he said, "I seen I seen MJ in the hood more than Curtis." <laughs> yeah. I don't know why this beef stuff is making us nervous. I think at the end of the day, um, Miles Turner would definitely, he just has a, a mature vibe, a mature f- a f- feel to me. But I, I think um, I, I think he would definitely be a, a piece. I think not only is it just LaMelo Ball's team, you have you have Kelly Oubre, um, PJ Washington. Um, Bridges, he's, he's really come on this year too. He's, he's looking beastly out there. James Morego definitely has a good squad, and I think he's a guy that you need to be paying more attention to um, because he's not necessarily a sexy name um, <clears throat> to many people in the NBA. Uh, I, I spent some time uh, with some members of the Hornets and their coaching staff uh, last month, um, and they just iterated to me that, you know, again, just like many other teams, once we get past this COVID and once there's this level of herd immunity and, and, and there's a belief that we're very close to it, mm-hmm they could just focus on playing basketball and for, for what one member of, of the Hornets sh- shared with me. Um, almost everybody in the league has gotten it already. So it's kind of like now looking towards the second half of the season, let's just focus on playing basketball. Yeah, because it's actually, because I, I believe it's uh, 90 days once you get it. So for the most part, we should be able to get through the rest of the season without somebody, you know, without these guys uh, getting it again. Um, really quick, I want to jump over to Philly because you did say you were out in Philly. Uh, I guess the biggest talked about trade that may happen, but then it might not happen. But then Steve Nash said no, but then it went back again. Ben Simmons, James Harden. Uh, I know, I'm sure Daryl Morey would love to bring James Harden to Philly while getting rid of, you know, Ben Simmons because he's kind of been a headache for them. Um, but what's going on with that situation? So the good thing about this conversation with you guys today is that I'm going to go over my notes from my show that I took so that I can fluently give you my synopsis. So number one, hold on really quickly, drop it again. School beat sources, 5 PM green room every Monday. So I got about, I got about 10 things. Number one. 76ers do want him. Um, number two, the connection to James Harden uh, is very interesting. Number one, their days in Houston. Um, they definitely enjoy time together, winning career-wise, success-wise, so much so that I do know um, maybe a year ago, a little over a year ago, when Maury was still the general manager of, this, of the, the uh, Houston Rockets, there was some brief conversation of how Houston could get Joel Embiid there and they never materialized, of course. So this is something that Maury has wanted for a while to pair Harden and Embiid together. Number two, I have lost count. It's not even number two, but another note, uh, the connection to Tad Brown. Tad Brown is now the CEO of uh, the Harris Blitzer organization that uh, is, is, is co-branched amongst the New Jersey Devils as well as the Philadelphia 76ers. He actually replaced Scott O'Neill. Tad Brown was the, 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 was the fix or the gum in the leaky faucet in Houston and definitely had a good relationship with Harden. And when things were going bad in Houston, he kept a lot together. He ultimately left Houston and was given the job in Philadelphia. Also, Michael Rubin, um, is a guy who has relationships with a lot of rappers, ball players, and more because of social change stuff, whether that's with Meek Mill and just con- naturally connecting to guys, whether that's Jay-Z, whether that's James Harden, whether that's Lil Dicky, all those guys. So he and James naturally have a relationship. Um, and Bead needs help. That's one of the things that I take away from my trip in Philly. He can't do it by himself, but sometimes when you get rid of a core to bring in a star you mess up chemistry and one thing that I've noticed about Philadelphia is they really rallied behind Embiid uh Tobias Harris shared with me um he he'd actually like to get a lob to Embiid uh but Embiid is like all encompassing on that team he's he's their LeBron James he passes the ball he shoots the ball he rebounds the ball he plays defense 
He is the epitome of not just LeBron on that team. He is baby D from next Friday. He babysits, does hair, and sell drugs. The cops don't know when to kick the door in. That being said, Tyrese Maxey has been the guy who has been so beneficial on that team. And one of the things that has been so special about him this year in his emergence is his mentor in Sam Cassell. Maxey shared with me that Sam told him, once you master when to shoot the ball, when to pass the ball, you're unstoppable. And I think that if you are to make a move or have dialogue with Brooklyn, Maxie would have to be included. And if I, and I feel like Brooklyn has all the leverage in the world right now. But come offseason, James Harden could walk. That's, the, that's, that's one of the risks that you deal with. So this is on the Philadelphia side. On the James Harden side, what I can share with you is this. People that I've spoken with have said, James says one thing to one group of people. He says another thing to another group of people. Mm-hmm. And to me, that comes with the territory of being a star on a team and being frustrated. The 24-hour cycle of news, as well as just social media, gives you the option to always report on everything that's going on. And that being said, he may be frustrated one day, the next day he's not. I know that he, had, from what I've been told, has been frustrated with the handling of Kyrie as it relates to preferential treatment. However, I know that those two guys are friends, friendly friends, have played on USC basketball together, have been on all-star games, have played in all-star games together. That's kind of just the regular ebbs and flows of what's going on. Ultimately, I don't see Kyrie Irving uh, getting uh, the jab, and that's been well reported on my side from what I know. Um, but on the, on the other side, I, I feel like... Um, whether Eric Adams, Mayor Eric Adams, decides to lessen the mandates uh, will determine whether or not, um, you know, what happens moving forward. I think Kyrie Irving is in a situation right now where he's like the baseball player on day's rest in the playoffs. And I think that as it relates to James Harden, ultimately, Brooklyn holds the ball. They hold the key. Um, but I also think that the chemistry that both teams have role player wise um, and any trade situation could be of equal benefit. I also think that Ben Simmons, um, Philadelphia holds the leverage with him because ultimately they can allow him to sit four years, not pay, not pay him or trade him. And I think that it would benefit both parties if they make a move, but it's not certain that those two teams will make a move at the trading deadline. Again, this could be something that could be re- revisited come draft time. Now, Scoop, you, you mentioned Kyrie. Um, I know you guys are close. Um, what's the short-term and long-term future with Kyrie and the Nets? Because as you mentioned, he's not going to get the vaccine. We still have to wait and see uh, in terms of the mandates and how that would affect him playing in the playoff game. Are the Nets going to start paying the fine? And then he didn't uh, sign his extension. So is he looking to stay with Brooklyn long-term or is this kind of a day-by-day thing that we got to pay attention to? So to, to, to make the, the, the my answer concise, And long story short, what I will say to you is I think that Kyrie Irving and the Nets at large, meaning James Harden and Kevin Durant, first and foremost, the focus is getting to the finals and actually winning it. I think whatever happens, whether James stays or goes and whether Kyrie and the Nets' success is what it is, it all depends on what happens in, in in, in the playoffs. And if I think if the Nets win in the finals, I think a lot of these questions that we're having on February 7th uh, will be null and void because winning cures all. But I think that <clears throat> if that's not the case, come father around a little bit before Father's Day in June, I think these are the questions people will begin to analyze on the net side. Well, what value does Kyrie bring if he's a part-time player? What value does he, but, but then that conversation shifts if New York changes their mandate. A lot of it is optics. Um, as it relates specifically to Kyrie's long-term plans, I don't know. That's not a conversation that I've had. I think it's a little early. But I do think that <clears throat> how he, I think what Kyrie is doing comparatively is where Ben Simmons should be. If people have tape of what you've done and they see how you've played, they have more recent stuff to go on and teams can make uh, valid assertions and, and, and just um, notes on what a team may need and how this player A or B can contribute. I think that 
if Kyrie Irving continues to play the way he needs to play, I don't think he'll have any short of suitors come summertime when that free agency uh, situation comes about. Even if it's not Brooklyn, it's going to be somebody else. I don't think that he's done in the league as it relates to people still offering him a contract because he's given you recent tape to show that he's still as talented, if not more talented. I think that the Nets long-term again is, is indicative upon what they do this off or, or, or in the, in the postseason. Yeah. Cause I, I think, I think you're right school. Cause usually that's, that's just how it is. You know, you win a championship that kind of, clears up a lot of the mess that's been that's been going on because you just want to chip so it's like you know what let's run it back and I think for especially for James Harden just because out of the three he's the only one that doesn't have a ring right now so him getting a ring I'm sure you know will you know help with the, with the decision making move forward whether or not he actually wants to stay in Brooklyn um I'm actually I'm, I'm a little tight right now because I was supposed to shoot with um Eric Adams on uh on Sunday so you know I was going I was going to slip in that question and uh, let's see what's going on with the vaccine mandate, but he had to reschedule. So, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna get back to him before the trade deadline. But if I do, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all y'all know what's up after I talk to the to the mayor of this uh, of this great city here here in New York. Um, Anthony Sources coming to you to a real fans, real talk, Nick. Yo, Spotify Green Room, check them out. We're gonna, I'm in we're gonna, Anthony Sources is gonna be six o'clock right after the school B sources, right back to back, back to back. I see what you did there. <laughs> Exactly. Now, question, um, because I'm all right. I'm hearing all of this stuff about the Nets being able to just go and pay the fines for Kyrie to play um, to play home games. I'm still confused by this because, you know, technically, it's not like nobody knows that Kyrie is not vaccinated. So you're kind of breaking you know, breaking the laws right now, to, you know, all of these the, the mandates of going into the Barclays Center. So how is one, how is this even possible that, that they can just pay the fines and everything is good? And do you see the Nets actually paying the fines come playoff time for Kyrie Irving so he can play throughout? Well, one thing that I find interesting is this. Um, while Kyrie Irving plays for the Brooklyn Nets, I know that one thing the Nets were trying to do and, and, and were somewhat successful is how they utilized um, the practice for facility as a private place. So he could actually still work out one, two, even though the Nets play at Brooklyn, Kyrie Irving is a New Jersey resident. And so I know that one of the things that they were kind of arguing is, well, if he's a New Jersey resident and he's playing in New York, wouldn't that be the same equivalent as say someone playing for the Washington Wizards who was unvaccinated coming to Brooklyn? And it, it seemed that there was no, it, it, it wasn't seen, it wasn't seen that way. Um, so I, I think that as we progress and the numbers continue to go down, <clears throat> I think that you will see certain conversations um, potentially being had or brought to the forefront. At the time of this recording, the Nets have about 29 games left and 10 of those Kyrie Irving will be eligible for. And those are away games, of course. And I don't think that game at the Garden is one of them. So um, because that's still New York City, I, I just think every city and every state has different mandates. And, and that being said, um, New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles have some of the most stringent laws because it's a lot of commerce that comes in and out of those cities. So I understand it. you got a lot of tourists, a lot of money a lot of influence coming out. And so you have to be careful. But I think some people's argument is, listen, again, I, I, I report the news, but I'm not a weatherman, I'm not a scientist, and I'm not a doctor, but I've heard the alternate arguments. Well, there are many people in the NYPD who are not vaccinated. There are people that are um, in other lines of work that are not but Kyrie Irving has become the, the poster boy for that and then you know there's people who feel like that's an agenda um the, the, because of his level of outspokenness I don't know but I do know that with the numbers going down I know that there are people who feel like there are some arguments that can be made as the numbers are going down if you pay attention to my report in December where I discuss and I know the blogs ran with it but 
I was making a suggestion based upon his uh, plant-based diet, uh, the notion that the plant-based vaccine could be something to consider. They ran with it with the, in the blogs and said that's something he would consider. Uh, and I've been put out of fire with that, but I, but you know, once it, get, it hits, it, it catches fire. I know that that plant-based vaccine is slated to kind of uh, expedite in, in its production process somewhere between March and April. Yeah. As far as I know, Kyrie Irving is not interested in taking the vaccine. However, with new clinical trials and all that stuff, again, that's something to consider. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think, you know, there, I'm sorry, just really quick, because I was watching the news today. Um, with next month, they're going to start um, taking away the mask mandate in schools. So I think we're headed in the right direction, but I just don't think we'll see the mandate lifted, the vaccine mandate lifted before uh, the, the end of this season. Like, I think we won't get that until next season. There's a lot of stuff that we can go on and on and on in a day. Some stuff that's kitchen table talk that we won't talk about live, but uh, we got a lot of work to do. And personally, I don't see this kind of shifting and, and real change happening till probably 2024. Now, I, I know Trip is eager to get into some Laker talk and find out what's going on with Russell Westbrook out there in L.A. But before we do, and since we're talking New York, I've got to ask you as, as a tortured Nick fan, you mentioned C.J. McCollum is on their list. We've heard that they might be willing to move Randall. What are you hearing about the Knicks at the trade deadline? And could Randall actually be moved? So we're recording this before the trading deadline. And one of the things that I was hearing prior to that is De'Aaron Fox. I know that uh, the 76ers uh, and the Sacramento Kings uh, were having conversations specifically uh, as it relates to the rights to, uh, I know Sacramento offered Philly a deal, including De'Aaron Fox, Harrison Barnes, um, in exchange for, as well as Buddy Heald, in exchange for um, Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons. And um, I know that, you know, Darren Fox has spent significant time out rehabbing and, you know, and talking to Alvin Gentry uh, last week, he, he shared with me that, you know, they're really taking time in this process of, of getting him back and, and, and rehabbing. I know that the Knicks are a team that has had their eye on Fox for years, even dating back to the NBA draft. Um, and they just couldn't get his hand, their hands on them. And I think that when you look at someone like Darren Fox, one of the things that I think would benefit um, the Knicks very much is the fact that um, they're trying to create more time and space for Cam Reddish. I just keep hearing that name a lot as it relates to, I mean, they traded to get him. What are you, how are you going to use them? And I think when you looked at that Lakers game the other night, they gave up a 20 plus point lead to the Lakers. But um, when I looked at Cam Reddish uh, or, or, or rather when I looked at RJ Barrett and what he was able to do, he definitely won the respect of, um, of guys on the Lakers. And I think that when you look at, um, someone like De'Aaron Fox, to me, a shooter, a grinder, somebody who still, you know, uh, commands the double team, and someone who would benefit R.J. Barrett's skill set a lot. I think we've been trying, I think that when you look at, I, I was talking to a, a, a veteran yesterday on the phone, and they shared with me, when you look at, um, when you look at their power forward um, and, you, and you see what he's doing, I think many people looked at what he did last year and many people were surprised because there was no tail of the tape. And then when they got to the playoffs and played the Atlanta Hawks, kind of got exposed a little bit. And I feel like after that whole hand gesture thing with the fans, a lot of the fans have turned on him. Mm -hmm. I feel like he was just in such a groove, like, like the fans was rocking with him. And then all of a sudden... No, we good. Fans in New York. Yeah, I, 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 but 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 that doesn't mean you also can't gain them back either. I think New York is is one of those things where they're not unforgiving. You just they, you you got to show and prove. So I, I think the Knicks, the one thing that they're really missing is like a superstar slasher, like the Kawhi Leonard type, mm -hmm. to just and I don't know that they have that already on their roster, or they're missing a Carl Anthony Towns type. 
Like they're missing a couple things. Just like I think the Memphis Grizzlies are missing a Carl Anthony Towns type. Um, I also don't know if Tibbs is the right coach for the future. I think he's the right coach for now. Um, as particularly as it relates to like establishing talent and just growing. But what we saw with the Brooklyn Nets some years ago, who you start with is not always who you finish with. And I think for the Knicks, a De'Ara Fox would help. But I also think I never looked at the Knicks as a playoff team this year. I always looked, I think they surprised a lot of people. I think you brought some nostalgia back. But I also think they're missing Derrick Rose yeah. a lot. Like they started, he started out the season hot. And I just think that they're missing some things that were good on paper and in person last year that they that that that, that are to their hindrance this year. Do you yeah, think uh, Trip, Trip, really quick? I want to say this because that, that's a great point by you, Scoop. Uh, they do need a veteran point guard. They missing Derrick Rose. Darren Fox, I shouldn't be surprised because it's another Kentucky connection, and we know they love the Kentucky guys over there. So great points on that. Yeah, I, I Wes, uh I bumped into him at the garden last month. And, you know, one thing that I'm really impressed with, uh, I spent some time around him and, and Leon Rose uh, at the King Day game. And um, just how much of a, of, I think people just look at Wes as a relationship guy. Like he's a basketball guy. Um, and I think that he just adds a one-two punch with he and Leon, all of those guys going back to the CAA days. Um, I, I like, I like them. I like their, I like their pizzazz, but I also think people want to have, people want to, people want to have to want to play for the Knicks. I think we had this resurgence last year where it was cool, you know, even with that banter back and forth with Trey Young. Okay. But like, you're supposed to come back after like free agency. Like, it was cool to bring Kemba in. I don't have a problem with Kemba. But, like, Kemba, to me, is not speak Kemba. Your mind. Speak your mind, school. Speak it's your mind, Kemba, man. It's not Kemba 10 years ago. Like, it, like, like, to me, Kemba was cool in Boston. Kemba was cool in Charlotte. Yeah. But, like, yeah. sometimes leaving a small market and going to a bigger market doesn't always translate the right way. Sometimes... Which sucks because I mean we coming off of Charlotte his last year in Charlotte he was All NBA third team, so I you know I actually liked it you know the signing for for the Knicks, you know what I mean. But he we just have not seen that Kimber Walker. I mean really we didn't even see that Kimber Walker in Boston because he was hurt so much. You saw it in Spurs this year, like you know Christmas game. Yeah, he was named you know player Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Listen, I have all the respect in the world for Kim Walker, but like on a consistent basis, like it's giving me Baron Davis and Cleveland vibes. Well, I and I, that's a good comparison. I didn't mind the move because it was cheap, but ultimately he wasn't supposed to play as many minutes as he's been playing either. Once Derrick Rose went down, yeah. that now the expectation changed. I agree. Now, while we while he's talking talking Knicks, the Cam Reddish uh, trade, right? Which I actually like for the Knicks a lot. But do you think that that's a that's like a that was like a pre move to try to work on Zion going there maybe in the future? I don't know if they're thinking that far ahead. I I think that they were definitely trying to unload Kevin Knox's contract, and Kevin Knox has been a guy that has been in conversations for years. I mean, even dating back to when. Many people thought that the Knicks were going to get Kevin Durant and Zion Williamson through free agency and through the draft. Yeah, I know that Kevin Knox's name was just floating around a lot, and I think that um, the Cam Reddish move to me, I, I, I've, I've just felt that Cam Reddish has been overlooked a lot, and I think in Atlanta he didn't have a, le a leg to stand on because that's that's they got so much young talent, whether it's Kevin Hurd or whether it's Trey Young. Um, you know, I, I just think that, that that I just think that that Hawks team wasn't that that Hawks team was not well, he's not a Nate McMillan guy to me. Mm. Um, he to me he's more of a Tibbs guy, okay. or or like a Jason Kidd kind of guy. Like he's just he's a high flyer. He can score. He can guard. In my opinion, positions one, two, three. He can play positions one, two, three. 
I know some people have, have compared him or like I know in the in the draft process was comparing him to Tracy McGrady. Um, but I just think like, I don't know. I, I just I just think like if you get the right point guard to compliment him, mm-hmm. it, it'll work. Like I, I really think like the Knicks have great young talent, but it's just bring it all together. I feel like Kevin Knox. I, I like him. I liked him, but I also like Mitchell Robinson now. I like I like their big men, but it, it's just a matter of staying healthy. COVID as well as just aches and pains have been have been no pun intended. The, the, the Knicks is Achilles heel this season, last season, for many a seasons. And just for, for the franchise's sake, I, I legitimately want to see the Knicks be successful. But again, like I said, New York has to be an attractive place. Manhattan has to be an attractive place, not just Brooklyn at this point. No, I got you. I got you. Now, we got to talk about the team that I'm under contract with uh, for a couple more years. They play out, you know, in, in, in the West uh, at, 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 at the crypto uh, <laughs> arena. That staple center, stop playing with me. <laughs> They changed that, man. Come so, on, they got, so they, got that, they got that new deal over there. That's nice. <laughs> That's Staples Center. Go ahead. But um, you know, guys, are, guys are back now. Uh, LeBron is back. AD is back. Um, I haven't seen AD look like he's looked since he's been back. Probably since they won the championship uh, in the bubble two years ago. Um, but you know, there's there's a lot going on with that team still. I still would like to give the big three with, with Russell Westbrook a try just because I feel like they haven't been healthy long enough to really get a get a good assessment of, of how good or you know bad you know they could be. But what's going on in LA? Are you hearing and rumbles? I know people have been talking the Westbrook trade thing, I mean, for the past two, three months at this point. But um what are you what are you hearing in regards to LA and, and any moves that they, they're trying to make during the trip? Trade deadline. I went through my notes from 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 Scoop B sources on Green Room, and and, and I'm I'm glad. Five I had p.m. Them. on Mondays. Five p.m. on Mondays. Scoop. That's B. so y'all know. <laughs> In case you forgot, uh, download the Spotify Green Room app. There you can check out Scoop B sources. So, a Lakers fixture uh, told me that they feel that when healthy, uh, that team would be at the top of the food chain if all things were equal. And so when you look at that team, uh, you have none. You have Trevor Ariza. You've had LeBron, you have AD. When LeBron was out, AD was out. When AD was out, LeBron is out. Carmelo, Russell Westbrook, COVID, just a, 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 a multitude of things that have gone not in their favor. Um, and so I spoke with AD last week and he shared with me that he's taking it a day at a time. Like he, he's glad to be back. He feels healthy. He took time to rest. And um, it's just a matter of things clicking. And, you know, one of the things that I think is, is kind of um, a head scratcher is just the rotation with their big men. Like you signed Dwight Howard, you brought in DeAndre Jordan, former net, um, and then DeAndre doesn't get a ton of playing time. And, you know, Jordan shared with me that he wants to play. Um, but ultimately, when his number's cold, he'll be there. And so this is the thing that stands out to me. Like we talked about the Knicks, the Lakers, in my opinion, have the same problem. They lack a traditional distributing point guard. A name to me that would make all the sense in the world for the Lakers at the time of this recording, pre-deadline, I will say, not because they're not going to get me, is Justin Holiday. I think Justin Holiday would make sense. And in order to make that happen, you'd have to send a minimum of two minimum salary deals to make it work, along with two second round picks. Who makes sense in this instance? DeAndre Jordan and Ken Basemore. If the Pacers are looking to rebuild, that's how you get someone like Justin Holiday. There, you can shift Russell to the two, Star Holiday at the one, LeBron, AD, and, and Dwight Howard fill that out. Um, and I think that's one way you can make it happen. I think that the Lakers were kind of strapped in how they can go about getting talent at this point. I also think that when you have guys on that team who are used to being stars in their respective market and they come together and become role players, that's not easy to, uh, to formulate. And I think that the first half of the season has been the ability to adjust. And that's what the Lakers have been doing. The second half of the season, they got to make some noise. Yeah. 
I I, I, I want to see I want to see them healthy. Um, I'm glad everybody's back. Right, well, Melo just went out, so everybody's not not back right now. But as far as the big three goes, I'm I I, I want to see what, what what can what can happen with this team because I don't I didn't think they were gonna get, be able to move Russell Westbrook, and even if you could move Russell Westbrook, what are you really gonna bring back and return for Russell Westbrook anyway? So I'm a, I'm gonna sit back, scoop. I'm gonna wait and see. Get them a couple of weeks, see if, see if they can get this, uh, you know, get together and, uh, and you know, and, and maybe get some type of chemistry and then we'll see because LeBron is having an amazing year right now. So I, I would love to see them get back to the championship and, and get my guy one more ring before I, my contract expires. Somebody close to LeBron said this to me the other day on the phone. They said, LeBron is not chasing championships anymore. He's chasing legacy and personal stats. Wow. Okay. Um, one last question about the Lakers. Frank Vogel, is he still on the hot seat? Is he going to get through the season? What are you hearing about Frank? Um, I know that the Lakers are taking it day by day as it relates to that. But I think the problem is when I look at this Lakers team, in my opinion, so handy is the respected voice of reason in that locker room. Lakers assistant coach Phil Handy. Huh? He's kind of in a similar, the only way I can compare it is kind of like when the Nets were in New Jersey, Myron Scott was the head coach, but Lawrence Frank was the guy that Jason Kidd bounced everything off of. Ultimately, Scott was let go. Lawrence Frank got the job. This situation is a little different because I think while the Lakers hired Fizdale as their lead assistant. And you saw a lot of guys like the turnover with Jason Kidd leaving, uh, Lionel Hollins ultimately not resigning. And then you brought some other assistants in. I feel like the Lakers often look for sexy names. The only name in that assistant coaching staff that makes sense is Fizdale. I'm not sure that the Lakers are ready to hand the reins over, particularly because less than two years ago, Frank Vogel guided that Lakers team to an NBA Finals. Now, the argument that people make is, well, Jason Kidd, as well as Phil Handy, were the voice of reason. And ultimately, the Lakers really did want Jason Kidd as the head coach, but because of some other circumstances as it relates to the optics of his past transgressions as related to his ex-wife and domestic violence, and the fact that the Lakers owner, the, minor, the majority owner, Jeannie Buss, is a woman, the optics looked bad. Frank Vogel exceeded expectations by winning a championship with the Lakers. And so I think when you look at that situation, you sign them to an extension. I don't necessarily think the Lakers are in a rush. I think that once they, they're healthy and once the playoffs end, in my opinion, they'll make a decision, depending on how they, they, they factor out. I think the Lakers are in a similar situation like the Nets. I think once you see the playoffs in the finals, who's in it? I think then you make it the decision of what's next. I'm going to jump into the uh, to All-Star Weekend. The reserves was was announced. You actually uh, spoke about two of the replacements, uh, LaMelo Ball and uh, DeJounte Murray. Um, I had a quick question uh, about somebody that I think may have got the snub, uh, Jared Allen. You know, that was my guy from Brooklyn when he played for the Nets. But I think he's since he got to Cleveland, he's actually stepped his game way up. And he's a huge part of the reason that they're ranked where they are right now in the Eastern Conference. Do you think that Jared, Jared Allen should have got one of those uh, spots? Yeah, but who do you replace him with? Or who replaces? The, like, how do you replace somebody like that? I, I think Cleveland is, is definitely making noise in the Eastern Conference, but it's still a popularity contest. That's why you saw LaMelo Ball get in as a, res as a reserve replacement. Mm -hmm. Uh DeJounte Murray quietly has done his thing and he plays for Greg Popovich. Um, I, I think, and I think Brandon Ingram, you know, plays on a, on a struggling team, which is why he didn't get that call. Yeah. But then you look at a team like the Washington wizards, right? Last year, Bradley Beal was in, but he also led the league in scoring at that point. Mm -hmm. And he's in Washington, DC. Oftentimes there's definitely a Regency bias in my opinion, um, but I also think, um, some of the same things can be said about Wiggins. 
many people feel like Wiggins shouldn't just uh, sh shouldn't have not only been a starter, he should have been voted in it as all, but he has the benefit of playing for the Golden State Warriors who are very marketable and well noticed. And he also has Canada voting for him. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and, and and I mean in, in that situation, Draymond did get hurt um a couple of weeks ago, which I'm sure kind of tilted the scales in his favor when because I think they're they're still in second place if, if I'm not mistaken, um right now. So are there gonna be any changes uh to all star weekend festivities um in terms of obviously with protocol or safety, anything like that? Well, I'm not going, so I don't know uh, as, a, as a member of the media, but I do know that um, I know that Cleveland has had a, from what I'm told, has had a tough time selling that city as it relates to parties and gatherings. But I do, I am told that Kitty Smith and Michael Jordan are still having their party um, as it relates to just media. I think, you know, you have different tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three. Depends on, you know, what tier you are as it relates to, you know, your, your, your vaccination status and just your strength of media determines where you're, you'll sit. Um, but, you know, this is stuff that you've kind of seen in the regular season at various arenas. So, you know, you, you kind of just adjust accordingly. But I think the biggest thing that I know from the nightlife, it's, it's going to be interesting uh, to see how that all carries out in Cleveland. Um, you know, I, I have colleagues who, you know, either are really excited or, they're disappointed they have to go or some who just don't want to go because they're not interested. Shout also, out. I know they're honoring the 75th anniversary team. Um, mm -hmm. And I have some surprises you'll see as it relates to that whole process. I'm sorry you were saying. I just wanted to shout out Kenny Smith because he don't, he don't even notice, but he's actually the reason why I was in the VIP section underneath uh, LeBron and the VIP section in uh, at Story the year that, um, that Miami beat the Spurs in the finals. Um, cause his tickets to the after party was actually came to, you know, the, the people that I was with. So shout out to Kenny Smith on that one. You don't know, but you made one of the best experiences of my life happen when you didn't go to, to the after party at story. It's over. <laughs> yeah. Now he going to come find you now. He might. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to text him the link. <laughs> Send him, let him know what's up. Tell him I said, thank you. <laughs> I will. I will tell him. Hey Trip, uh, be before we wrap, you want to shout out the sponsors, man? Yeah, yeah. Let me do. Oh, let me before before we shout out the sponsors really quick. I have to 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 mention this last thing in regards to All Star Weekend. Something new that they are doing. Um, they are the, the HBCU Classic, which is going to be uh, Morgan State versus versus Howard University. I am so excited for this, um, just because the type of exposure that these two uh, historically black colleges are going to receive from being a part of the all-star weekend uh, activities. I just think it's an amazing thing, especially, you know, we've spoken so much this year, Eric, about Deion Sanders and the job that he's done for the football programs at, at, at these schools and, and giving them all that extra popularity and notoriety. This is a, another huge, uh, you know, move by the NBA. And, and I just, I just want to congratulate Adam Silver in the NBA for making this a part of NBA All-Star Weekend because it's something that's needed. And I'm glad they're continuing to push the HBCUs. My parents are, my mom and my, and my father are, are a proud alum of, of uh, Morgan State. So um, I, I'm, a, I'm, a HB, I'm a product of an of a, of a HBCU union. And uh, it's pretty cool to see. I, I felt like growing up between watching A Different World and just hearing stories from my mother, uh, being, you know, pledging AKA and and and, and more, uh, you know, just I, I felt like I was a part of something, even though I didn't go to HBCU. Hearing the stories, pretty dope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, let me uh, let me let me get get these sponsors. Big shout out to Kmart, uh, the Rosado firm, of course, Petro Home Services. And our guys over at Soundview Liquors, they always make sure the bar is stocked for us. Uh, make sure you guys are following us on all our social media, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. And of course, subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. Do not worry if you're not in New York City on Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. and you can't watch on Verizon 43, you can still watch from anywhere in the world. Just go to the realfansrealtalk.com website, click that red button on the homepage, and you can watch from anywhere you are in the world. 
And uh, make sure you guys subscribe to all the podcasts, the Sanchez Show podcast, Real Fans Real Talk podcast, and of course, you know, our Grown and Sexy Crab the Shooting the Shit podcast with our brother Sean Fontaine. And um, y'all better be on Spotify on Mondays at 5 o'clock because we ain't the only one that need them sources. So y'all better be, be locked in, um, you know, scoop. Just really quick, give them a rundown one more time of, of everything that you got going on before we get up out of here. Valley Sports um, Network, you can find my, see it behind me, uh, all my day-to-day work, uh, interviews, written work, and more, uh, both online and, and on television. Uh, in addition to that, you can check out my new show at Spotify called Scoopy Sources. When is it come on, Legend? <laughs> 5 p.m. every Monday, Spotify Green Room, Scoopy Sources. And then also, I do an Instagram Live uh, weekly uh, through Bovada Sports Betting. And I got a special guest. We're taping now, but I got a special guest on Friday. So that will definitely be hitting the blogs. Hey, can you let us know who the guest is? Is this going to air on Thursday? Wait, is it Jay-Z? <laughs> well, that's all I'm saying. You know, throw up the rock. It better be Jay Z. Come on. All right, Scoop, don't do this to us, man. <laughs> now nah, we got it. We got to tune in. We just, sound like that. You can't do that. Nah, we we listen. You got to leave the, the mystery for the people. The people got to tune in. It's either Jay Z or Scooby, Diamond Dallas so, Page. So which one is it? Oh, he said DDP. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Somebody with a diamond. Hey, uh, um, nah, major, major shout out those school man. We appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us, man. Uh, I really enjoyed the interview you had with Jim Jones. So I'm going to tune in Friday, see who you got, man. Please do. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Scoop B, Instagram at Scoop underscore B. That's where you can find all my work uh, or all announcements and things that I'm doing. Uh, and I'm having fun. So uh, Valley Sports, Spotify, and Bovada is where you can find all the things that I have going on. That's it. Oh, before before we get out of here too, we got to ask Scoop, Scoop, real quick. Super Bowl pick, Rams, Bengals. Who you going with on Sunday? The Rams. There you go. LA, LA, big city of dreams. Eric, give us a final thought so we can get up out of here, man. Man, as I always say, I appreciate everybody who tunes in, showing love, showing support. Again, thank you to Scoop for taking the time to sit down with us. I think it's going to be a great episode. And um, keep tuning in, man. We're going to keep putting out that content. That's it. So listen, for myself, Trip Young, my brothers, Eric Sanchez, and Scoop B, we up out of here. Peace. Peace. Live from the camp. Four live. Five from the camp. Uh huh. This is Hi, real fans. Real. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.